Hello everybody, welcome to Austin Rusty Bucket. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and drop a like on this video. I am trying to hit 80,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so your subscription would be much appreciated. Also, go subscribe to my main channel if for whatever reason you were subscribed to this one and not that one. I'm trying to hit 200k subscribers there by the end of the year, so that subscription would also be much appreciated. Um, I have a sore on my tongue, so I might talk kind of weird. But uh, it's hot takes, so let's get into it. Cam Reddish will be an all-star and all-defensive player. Uh, I think I'm going to fall in the middle with Cam Reddish, where some people think he's going to be a scrub, some people think he's going to be a star. I think he's just going to be a really, really high-value role player. Uh, the one thing that would push me towards him being a star-caliber guy is that Cam Reddish is like the king of the million-dollar move and the 10-cent finish. Like, he does that shit all the time. Uh, so maybe if those moves actually start going in, then I'll see the avenue for him being a star. But if I had to guess, I'm just going to go towards high value role player who hits his threes and plays good defense. He's already kind of that right now. Ja Morant has been the second best point guard this season. Uh, I'd probably give him third place because it would go Steph and then Trey Young and then Ja. But uh, I don't like know that Ja has been that much worse than Trey Young. So for to some extent, I would kind of respect that opinion. Uh, but it's cool to see Ja jump the ladder so much. Um, granted, Dame gets back to normal, which he's been doing lately, and Kyrie is playing, and then he's no longer even top uh, top four. But for now, I'd put him at the third spot. Also depends on if you consider Luca a point guard or not. But uh, I would even say that Ja has he played a little bit better than Luca? I don't. I, probably not. Probably not. Uh, comparative to expectations he has, but probably Luke has been a little better, but that depends on what you categorize him as. So yeah, uh, Jaws been really fucking good. Cade Cunningham is underrated because he is on the Pistons. Uh, I, to some extent, sure. I feel like it's under mentioned that Cade Cunningham is very quickly getting himself back in the rookie of the year race. Uh, in fact, I would argue that by the time the year is done, he's going to be second in voting after Evan Mobley and will pass Scotty Barnes in that regard. Cade also has been on like a six game, like 20 point per game average streak-ish thing, if I recall correctly. So Cade Cunningham uh, is very good and he started off the year kind of slow and was obviously injured to start. But uh, don't sleep on him in terms of that rookie of the year race. I'm almost certain Evan Mobley is going to win the award. But uh, Cade is going to make a case. He just didn't get to make the case right out of the gate like those guys did. Wiseman will be a top five center by the time the season ends. You are delusional. Trey Young is a top six player in the NBA and is a sleeper MVP this year. Well, until the Hawks start winning more games, uh, he's not a sleeper MVP. I think one of my bold predictions for this season was the Hawks would be like a 60-win team and Trey Young would be in MVP conversations. Uh, he's played like an MVP, but the team's wins have not been there. So, uh, no to the MVP thing. Has he played like a top six player? I'd also say no to that, but... He's not far. He's pro he's definitely played like a top 10 player this year, but I'm sure I could name six players who have played at least marginally better uh, than Trey Young. But Trey has been fucking phenomenal this year, so credit to him for that. If the Nets get anyone from the Pacers, they will win the championship. Well, I don't think Demonis Sabonis actually moves the needle for them all that much because they need a defensive five, not an offensive five. More offense isn't really all that necessary. Although I guess you can make the case that it is since the like, Kyrie's not playing. But uh, I would I would say if you get Miles Turner, also Karis LeVert, I don't think is really going to matter all that much. But Miles Turner, uh, if you could do a Joe Harris for Miles Turner swap, I would personally do that. Uh, I suggested that a while ago and a lot of Nets fans pushed back from that. Uh, but Joe Harris has not been playing lately and they've still been good in spite of that. I understand the weapon that he is offensively where it's like when everybody's healthy, that's your fourth best score. That's like a crazy good scenario to have. But honestly, uh, even though the Nets defense has been good this year, I think you are like... 100% going to be a great defense if you trade for Miles Turner, and I think that's worth the sacrifice of Joe Harris personally. Uh, and maybe you can even make the trade without making Joe Harris the piece that moves, but uh, either way, if they can trade for Miles Turner, they need to do that shit. The Cavs won the Harden trade. Sorry, the Jarrett Allen trade. I mean, yeah, didn't the Pacers only, or not the Pacers, didn't the Cavs only give up like a first round pick that was like protected and not even their own first round pick? Uh, like, they gave away nothing and got Jared Allen kind of for free. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, the Nets got James Harden, which is good, but they gave up a ton of first-round picks for a guy who's been really disappointing this year. 
Uh, and on the Rockets end of things, just getting a bunch of first round picks feels like an undersell of uh, a James Harden trade. Uh, the Pacers got Karis LeVert, who's not been good for them. So, yeah, uh, Victor Oladipo's career is practically ruined. Not that it wasn't going that way anyways. Uh, kind of everybody got the short end of the stick there, except for the Cavaliers, who got Jarrett Allen, who is playing historically good right now. Uh, I saw a stat from a guy who I follow on Twitter, and I'm sorry for forgetting your name right now. Uh, but it was like, there are like 30 players who have averaged 17, 11, and two blocks. And he and Jared Allen has the highest true shooting percentage of those guys by like a 10% lead. So it's a, it's a pretty astonishing thing that Jared Allen is doing. He's really efficient with his offense, an incredible defensive player, an incredible rebounder. Uh, just very, very good for the Cavs. So uh, shout out to him as well. I don't know why I keep shouting people out, but I don't fucking know. In terms of pure, like, what you gave versus what you received, the Cavaliers I've, I absolutely got the most out of what they gave up. Steph is not playing better than Giannis, KD, or Jokic. Well, first of all, nobody's playing better than Jokic. Jokic has been the best player in the league this season. But uh, Steph was playing better than KD and Giannis until he went on, like, a five-game streak of shooting, like, 37% from three, which... It's not bad, but for Steph Curry it is. So, uh, yeah, Steph has gradually uh, been tanking the season that he otherwise had a fantastic start to. I was actually planning on making a video on is Steph better now than he was in 2016, but ever since he's went on this streak of horrible games, it's hard to argue box score stats-wise that there's a case there. So I need him to pick his shit back up so I can make that video again, because I think... Before that streak, he was playing better than he ever had in 2016, but he has to, like, keep doing that. So, uh, that video has been postponed, like, three different times now, because he keeps playing like shit. So, figure it out, Steph. Anthony Edwards has the potential to be the best shooting guard in the league. I mean, if we're looking at, like, future projected shooting guards, sure, I think he'd be better than Devin Booker or Zach Levine. James Harden's already aging out and not going to be there much longer. If we want to consider uh, Kyrie a shooting guard when Ant comes back, or when he comes back, I don't know if Ant will pass him, but uh, he definitely has the potential. He hit 10 threes yesterday, so... And then the Edwards has kind of sky's limit potential. I thought that he would cap out as, like, a better... Uh, version of Victor Oladipo, which he's not even been like Oladipo at all uh, so far in his career. But um, yeah, he's been, he has, de I definitely think he has an argument for being the best shooting guard in the league. I'm just not saying it like for sure. Uh, but he keeps getting better and he has that potential. Evan Mobley has by far the highest ceiling of this draft class. Um, I'd say he's probably tied with Cade, not, uh, well, here's how I'd put it. Uh, Evan Mobley as a big man will be less impactful than a, a, a large guard. So on that end, uh, I think they'll be equally as good at their peak. But in terms of pure uh, incredible ability, Evan Mobley would be better, but just less impactful because he's not a 6'8 guard. Does that make any sense? Uh, basically, I mean just inherently what Evan Mobley is is a little bit less valuable than a guard. So that will split the difference for the fact that I think Evan Mobley would actually probably be a little bit more talented and be better but less valuable because of his position. Uh, I'm sure that makes some sense to some people. I don't fucking know. Anyways, uh, that was Hot Takes. Goodbye.